Good afternoon, everyone. Hail damaged flights just seem to be coming the norm in the last six months. It's really strange how many there are this year. Is flight going to be also affected by cosmic ray and cloud increases during our new solar minimum? Let's take a look and see if there will be any effect with airline travel during the new solar minimum. As you know, cosmic rays create more low cloud cover up to five times thicker cloud cover during solar minimums. Of course, you're going to expect higher updrafts, stronger core winds, and thicker walls of hail inside the storms. Not only that, turbulence accompanies all of these massive storms. It's like the flight path goes straight into a wall of hail. This is going to become more and more common. Look for it starting right now. The latest story making a few headlines was a Delta plane that was forced to make an emergency landing after it was absolutely pulverized with hail. The nose cone is severely damaged as well as the windscreen. Those pilots, exceptional in their duty landing that plane. Do you realize how difficult that would be in an immense storm as well as not being able to see out of the windscreen? The wings were also pockmarked. Different look from the flight club. They have a lot of information on aerial delays and different kind of emergency landings happening planet-wide. Now this is definitely not a one-off event. What I've started to find in my research, it's happening more and more in 2015 in so many places. This was a Boeing 787 from Beijing. This one's a Delta 747. Brazilian Airbus A321, look at the damage on that. That is frightening to think about if you were in that aircraft and it got damaged that badly in flight and landed. A few views of some windscreens after they're pulverized by hail in the sky. Now notice that's real interesting. All these are from 2015. I did look through the net and scoured a little bit. It's the third time it's happened just this summer. Other instances also occurring during the springtime. I did find another one back in 2006. This is the image here for you. What seems to be happening is these flights are flying directly into incredible walls of hail. As you've noticed, the hailstone stories from around the planet of how large hailstones are getting these days. Now, cosmic ray-induced clouds start around 15,000 to 20,000 feet. Cross-section here of what the storms look like on the interior. Notice, though, that white patch is exactly what the planes are starting to hit. And if you don't know about cosmic rays, they are acting as cloud nuclei as the Earth's magnetosphere decreases due to the new solar minimum. There's a direct correlation of the strength in the sun at solar maximum and the decrease in galactic cosmic rays. Inversely, when it comes to solar minimum, there's an increase in galactic cosmic rays. This will spur on low level cloud cover. This is a simpler diagram showing that when there's a strong magnetic field from the sun, it deflects the cosmic rays and we have clearer skies and a warmer earth. G, just like global warming. And coincidentally, these previous solar cycles we've been in in the modern era have been the highest in the last 3,000 years. And you'll also notice when there's a weak magnetic field coming off the sun, which we're heading into the Earth will become cooler and cloudier. As you can see in a simple diagram here, low clouds. High clouds allow sun rays to penetrate through. Low clouds deflect off. Specifically, what I'm talking about is this kind of cloud level here is going to fill in completely. Now, these solar minimums are known to have five times more cloud cover during the events of those years. Cross section of the storm, you can easily see in that light pink where the hail is right around that 20,000 foot level. And almost all of these instances are happening between 15 and 20,000 feet, exactly where the, the new clouds are forming because of the galactic cosmic rays. It's just really coincidental that all these hail damaged aircraft are flying through the same 5,000 foot zone or so from 15 to 20,000 feet. 
and it's been proven already through science that all of these new clouds form at that height, and these storms are going to intensify. The thickness of the clouds is going to intensify. The snowstorms are going to intensify. You've seen incredible rains across the planet. The intensification of five times more cloud cover is beginning, and you've seen a little bit of it in the last year. It is going to intensify over the next couple of years until we reach that five times mark. I would say we're at 1.5 now. We're going up to five. Additionally, the shocking rise in cases of injuries and turbulence on airplanes the Australian Transportation Safety Board. From October of 2013 to now, there's been a significant rise above the historical average. And just in 2014 and 15, that has even doubled comparatively. So I went back to the websites looking around to see if I could find injuries from turbulence right away. Turbulence, is it becoming more common? These are the news articles popping up. Google search, you'll find 350,000 search results on more turbulence. What's creating more turbulence? Now, it's interesting, though. All these articles I'm citing about the turbulence are all 2014. There's really nothing new statistically coming out, which makes me wonder, why are they not putting those statistics out this year? Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. There's going to be many changes coming up societally with our solar minimum happening, intensifying, and getting into deeper cool. Agriculture production is one thing we need to eat every day, but air safety and travel across our planet is also going to need to be, how shall we say, rethought in flight patterns, the way they fly currently through storms. They're going to have to consider going on the periphery to avoid these walls of ice within the storms that will grow larger, stronger, with more hail inside. Remember to subscribe to my channel, Adapt 2030, and I'll keep stories coming to you just like this.